Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you something that I've been doing recently. So um, I have never been an art journaler. Um, I've tried many times and it just never clicked with me. And I so desperately wanted to be an art journaler. And I'm not sure what um, was the hiccup, but I decided to try again. And this time I succeeded and I'm so proud of myself. Um, this, I made this journal from scratch. Um, a lot of it is recycled materials. This was like a scarf or sorry type, not sorry, sarong type material. Um, and so a lot of it's recycled. Um, and I, all I did was I took like a blank piece of paper, you know, and I just folded it in half like this, like copy paper. And I just made signatures out of copy paper. And I um, just made it completely loose. And the last thing I've done is bound it. So, and I really like that better than having a beautiful, perfect store-bought book. And then, you know, being afraid to fill it. So um, you can even see what was on the cardboard behind this. It was like a, I don't know, this pattern. So all of this is handmade. And um, so I just wanted to do a flip through with you because I'm so proud of myself. So this was like a cardboard piece of paper, thicker paper. Um, I do have some of this um, book cloth um, that I wanted to put on the spine. I did two signatures and I think I'm going to just glue it to the spine to make that look nice. So I'm, you know, 99% done, but that is a step that I'm going to do. This is mostly, uh, you know, it's a little bit flexible, but um, so I started this journal in fall 2020 and um, this was the first page I did. This is a sticker. Um, this is my stamp that I have for my classroom. I drew this little mandala. I think I was watching Barb Owen and this is just copy paper. So um, I was just putting things down, washy and this was something from my desk and I don't know, I cut it up and put it there. A note from a meeting that I wanted to remember some of the things. Um, playing with paint pens. I would write different things that were inspiring. So give what you need is something I have on my desk at work. Um, and sometimes I find like a block with students and I really want to help them. And so sometimes I always try to give what I need to them. Like if I need to just be listened to, then maybe I should listen to them. And then it usually works out pretty well. Um, and then this is something else actually I have on my desk. Comparison is the thief of my joy. Um, in other words, don't compare yourself to anybody else, especially in art, right? Um, so, and I just drew some of these things. This is cut out from a magazine. Um, I wrote getmessy.com. I don't know if I've even ever been to getmessy.com, but I wrote it down there. And then I was um, inspired by, I don't know who it was, but this is some of my paste paper. And I just cut it up and made these cute little like um, pie charts. So kind of math. I don't know. This is actually a copy of the zine that I made for um, the zine swap from Dee Dee's Halloween zine swap. So I, did I miss a page? I don't know. I wanted to keep a copy for myself. So I just copied it. And then I, this is a little um, page protector that I just cut down and put in there. And actually this is a flap and I didn't put anything underneath it, but scrapbook paper, lots of washi. Um, one of my friend's children, who's what? seven was so excited to tell me about the Fibonacci uh, series sequence. And so I made him a little private like video tutorial because of course we're 
social distancing, so I couldn't do the artwork with him, but I made a little video for him and showed him how to do it, and this is what I made with him, and, um, you know, here's the Fibonacci, and when I did it, it's with Sam, so, um, and then in my work, um, I was working a lot, I'm sorry, there's a glare, working a lot with landscapes um, in my classroom because I'm teaching um, completely um, live teaching, but on Zoom. And so I've made lots of little samples and stuff, and um, I would do these at home. This is just like a collage of different magazine paper um, and playing around with background, middle ground, foreground. And so I would do little samples and stuff at home and then put them in my book and then I could take my book to work and use those as inspiration. I also ordered a whole bunch of these stickers uh, because I wanted a way to connect with my students that I don't see in person. And so when they do something really awesome, I send them five stickers in the mail um, and they love it because, you know, teenagers love... Um, to get, they're going to say stickers are baby, but they're not. Uh, a, a, one of my coworkers, who's kind of a rough, gruff guy um, on the outside, uh, he's in his 60s and he, he came to my classroom one day and he saw the stickers out and he goes, can I have a sticker? <laughs> and I said, sure, choose any stickers you want. So those are the stickers that I ordered. These are some of the stickers. I just painted and put some washi. Um, you know, I'm quarantined, um, <laughs> so I just thought this was the cutest little family, and I want to go. Just painted the background with watercolor. A lot of the backgrounds were just watercolors. Um, some something quick and easy. Um, this is a little card. This is a copy of something I did at work, a tutorial that I was showing them about depth. In space and how things go back in space they get smaller um, and actually in this little one is the original drawing that I did as kind of a sample or a, and then um, I did this at home and then when I went to work I did this one and then I just took a picture and printed out what I did at work and put it in here so you can see lots of landscapes um, I did this from a Visual Mind tutorial. I don't know if you follow Visual Mind. She's on YouTube. And she used gouache. And um, I just used like the cheapest um, cake tempras, tempera cakes. It's not, it's not, it's water-based, but it's not like watercolor. So, and then I put some paint pen on top. There's more landscapes. Um, here I just glued in some landscapes that were inspiring to me because I was um, one of the assignments that I was doing with my students um, was looking for landscapes. This is Mount St. Helens, um, which is in my state. Um, I have never, I've been to Mount St. Helens, but I haven't been to the very top or anything. That's only for, you know, climbers and stuff, but it's beautiful out there. Um, and then I had surveyed my students um, about different things. I play some calm music. Do they like it or not? How is the speed of the class? Pretty much it's either a little too slow or a little too fast, but that means I'm doing okay. Um, how did they rate a unit we did on comics? It was average, one out, you know, out of five, but that wasn't the best one. But then... Um, how do they like the visual journal unit? They liked it. How would they rate the class? I got a four out of five stars. So I put these stars here and these are just like the actual data. It doesn't have any students' names or anything. It's all um, anonymous. But I was just like, you know, virtual teaching is hard. And so um, for me, this was a good um, way to check and see if I was doing what I was doing. And these are all of their comments that they put, like when I asked them, what could I, any other feedback? And so, look at, I, I mean, they just were really, um, I like 
but I like, oh, I wish we had more projects again, but I like the class. I really like this class and I think it's fun. I really enjoy this class and I think you are doing a wonderful job. Like, even as an adult from the students, this is like gold to me. So um, I'm kind of getting a little emotional about it, but it's been a rough year teaching, but this was, um, this was a great thing that I did for myself. So I did more another landscape um, from a magazine and I start and I wrote paint and I, I started to paint it in this is just graph paper like really thin actually under this um, sticky note is information um, about um, a woman that I know she got COVID in the spring um, pretty early on uh, she is a substitute teacher and um, she almost died um, and I ran into her um, but she didn't, I should say she didn't, um, she was on a ventilator for weeks, um, and she, uh, I remember the day she went home, it was so amazing, and she's substitute teaching now, and I ran into her in the office at my school, and, um, she, ha I said, oh, I've been following your journey, and I'm so glad you made it through, and, um, she handed me this little card and it's so it's a video I can watch her family put together of her YouTube journey of her COVID journey because um, she doesn't remember most of it because um, you know when you're on a ventilator you're sedated and she just doesn't remember so her family made this and then ever she says everybody I run into ask me how I am and how was my journey and so that's a little card there um, and I think that that's important to put that in this is definitely a a journal during COVID, um, but just watercolor in the background. Here's a note I got actually from my um, daughter's teacher. She put it in the mail to me um, and I helped her out last year. So I just covered up her name, but you know, I never have a place to put thank you notes. So I wanted to put it in there. This was just color. I, that's it. <laughs> um, Another landscape. This one wasn't a photograph, um, but I found this in a magazine. I just like the way it was painted, the way the hills are. So I just put it in. That's the first signature. The second signature, I used one of those um, pie charts and I put some paper around it and cut this out from a magazine. It says, keep on playing. You can discover more about a person in an hour of play than in a year of conversation. And that's from Plato. And I totally practice that as much as I can in my classroom um, about playing um, and this is actually a stamp I made I don't it's somewhere around here but a stamp I made um, out of fun foam and I just cut it and glued it down and that's just with um, and this is just with regular India ink I just painted it on so lots of washi um, I was inspired by this pattern that I saw somewhere. So the background is actually a piece of paper that I've had for several years. Um, and I made it by um, rolling off the extra paint off of my roller from um, the jelly plate process. And so I had kept this piece of paper for a really long time, years. And so I glued it on this paper and then used paint pen to draw on top of it and put some things in the background. And I made this little flip out card and it's um, from that same article on keep on playing. And it says playfulness in a relationship. And I just wrote keep playing and it's a good little reminder. I use some scrapbook paper here. So real kind of sketchy, junky, but um, this was an assignment this side here was an assignment that a fellow art teacher did and um, she showed me and I like ran right home and did it um, <laughs> like the art nerd that I am so this is paste paper um, and then I just printed out a chair from the internet and watercolored it and then fussy cut it and then I glued it on and then I put in like the lines of the room and her lesson to the students, um, here's another one actually on this side, was that where you place the object, 
um, can mean something. So like this one could be about being bold or in power because it's right in the center and it's royal, you know, purple. And then this one could be more about being shy or hidden, you know, back around a corner kind of thing. So I did two of those just to kind of, I don't know, I just wanted to do it. Um, same with this. This is just paint pen and I got my paint pens out and I just wanted to play. Um, so more kind of landscape. It's, I would say that's unfinished, but I was practicing um, the day before I was teaching them how to paint trees and I was painting trees and I actually got interrupted by one of my children. So that's how it ended. <laughs> unfinished, but that's okay. Um, so practices are in here too. This is just a whole bunch of things I found and cut up. <laughs> this is actually painted on and washi tape, but these are just scraps um, on this side. And then this side are from a seed catalog. I think I have it here. I've had this seed catalog for a while. This is a 2019 So True Seeds catalog. And in one of the pages, they had all of these pictures and they were just little. That's how big they were. But I just cut them all out and put them all down. I just like the way that they were painted and the colors and that kind of thing. But I love this seed catalog because um, it always has the coolest covers. So, yeah. Um, so this was last month and I, I guess I should probably, but I found this image in a magazine, an old magazine. And I, that, this is what's going on in, in November right in the United States it's not good um, and so I wrote about that and I put a, like a little picture from a magazine about being kind of hopeful and um, but and I put a real band-aid on it <laughs> um, but yeah the world needs some healing so I wrote about that just a little bit um, another thank you card from work um, here, this was an idea from Dee Dee. She watched it from a domestic, she watched a domestica course and got this idea where you cut, cut something in half and then put paper in. Let me see. Uh oh, so you put pattern paper in and I think she put in pattern paper from that one book. I have it here. Hold on. I think she used pattern paper from this book and I haven't cut this book up, but I plan to for sure. This might be actually like some of the paper that I use for the next one of these journals because I'm pretty proud of myself for uh, finishing one journal. But anyway, that was Dee Dee's idea that she shared with us from a Domestica course. And so I put that in there, more of that stamp that I had made, more washi. Um, this is actually a sticker from a university, um, what is it called? Cornish University. And they send these stickers out. Um, and then this is a sticker I made quite a long time ago when I was teaching a watercolor course and I gave all the students, this was outside of public school. Um, it was actually at the local library and I gave the students a whole bunch of, um, watercolor supplies that, um, like um, people had donated like watercolor companies or um, small watercolor companies and I so I made a custom sticker of one of my watercolor sets it's so cute and so that was one of them and I put them on the bags this this is where I'm getting in trouble Dee Dee <laughs> when I paint in class I have all this extra paint left um, because I'm showing students how to mix paint, but Dee Dee had this idea, idea from Dee Dee, leftover paint into patterns. So I have painted a whole bunch of these. Let me go get one. Okay, so here is my pile of, um, this has just been washed down the drain, and this is on copy paper, um, and it's just my extra paint, painted out into rectangles, or squares and then little patterns painted on top and these are great these are great for pattern paper you don't need to buy that big book you don't have to buy this you can just use your leftover paint or any paint 
Um, but you can see it's all curled and stuff. This is the last one I did, and it's much more green in person than on the recording, but I was thinking maybe I could put some little red dots on it, and maybe a star at the top, and that could be little Christmas trees. I don't know. Um, but this one I'm not finished, but little like snowflakes. Just a whole bunch. It's a lot of leftover paint. That would have all gone down the drain. So thank you, Dee Dee, for that idea. I will um, use it, the idea in my classroom too, or live Zoom painting or whatever you want to call it. Another one, I didn't have enough uh, of my pie chart um, paper, so there's a piece missing, but I just taped it in there. Um, this was one of those things that I just painted out, one of these. And I just cut it up and I had some old scrap paper and this little seine. And then I um, have this book that I really like reading um, as a teacher. Um, I've had it for years. I wonder if it says. Um, I know I got it in 2002 um, from Adam and Emily. I'm sure they don't. It was at a job in the middle of nowhere, Utah. And I... Um, worked with um at a wilderness therapy program and it it's this is the book and so sometimes i like to read it it's really calming to me and it has some really great ideas for teachers um and it's it speaks in like um like parable kind of kind of like you know Taoism is is a um philosophy and a religion anyway so I wrote, the wise leader speaks rarely and briefly. I, this is just copied from this book. After all, no other natural outpouring goes on and on. It rains, then it stops. It thunders, and then it stops. The leader teaches more through being, through being than through doing. The quality of one's silence conveys more than long speeches. <laughs> hmm. Be still. Follow your inner wisdom and order to know your inner wisdom you have to be still so be still follow your inner wisdom in order to know your inner wisdom you have to be still the Tao of leadership um, whatever my children did that day it did not bother me I was just quiet and they were terrified <laughs> whenever they did something wrong I would just look at them and not say anything and it totally worked <laughs> um yeah so that's a good reminder for myself. Um, I had an idea to for my classes to use tracing paper to, so there's a, that's actually Mount St. Helens again, and just putting on tra tracing paper and trace the landforms and then they could use this for a composition, um, to start a composition. Okay, I found this leaf on the ground on election day, and I'm not gonna talk about politics, but it did give me lots of hope. Um, and so I um, f dried all these leaves and then put Mod Podge down and wrote a little bit about it. Um, this is just a sticker. Um, this is a brochure from a Thai food place that I love to go to and eat. And so I had this gold paper and so I just cut it out and glued it on. So I got a really nice email from a parent of a kid and I cut it out and glued it in. Uh, Cause right now kind of need every single little happy thought that we can have. Um, so that was nice. And then this was a brochure for some art supplies. Um, it's like a Faber-Castell watercolors that click in and you can make a, uh, um, color wheel. And I just liked the ad. I just liked the, the way that they had painted underneath it. So, um, I just cut it out and glued it in. And then this I found, Stella created this with me when she was really young. There's no way I'm going to get it all in. And it was a you know, a collaboration. She did all this drawing in the background and this really free watercolor. And then I just came back in as she was doing it and just made some different marks. 
So I just liked it. I thought, oh, that was from her childhood, like her when she was like one or two. So I just like, I got to put it in somewhere safe. And then the last page in the book is um, I bought some paper and this was like the front of the paper pack. And so I glued that in. And then this is some leaves um, that is that are from a tree right across from um, my classroom. So in my classroom, I'm by myself zooming, um, but I can look straight from my desk out um, out my door. My door has a big glass panel and I can see all the autumn leaves. And I love this time of year for that. And so I always want to do something with these leaves. So I found this leaf, these leaves, and I pressed them and dried them. And then I had seen that Kathy Arbor, I think that's what her name, did it with the, laminated the leaves. And she had ginkgo leaves, which I love ginkgo leaves. I have in some of my other journals, but since it was fall, I was doing these um, maple leaves. And so I just um, laminated them and just stapled them in. And so that is my first ever completed art journal. I'm really super proud of myself. Um, so yeah, I'll leave some of the information about some of the things I talked about down on the, um, in the information box below. Um, but as you can see, I'm kind of changing directions in my artwork and I've done this a couple times in my life before. I still really like, um, vintage images and things that look kind of old, but for art journaling purposes, I really like more of a visual journal. Um, so yeah, I don't really know how to wrap this up other than saying thank you for watching. Okay, so I did an online paint and sip with some of my friends. So I was at home, they were at their homes and we followed a tutorial and look what, look what I did. Isn't that cute? So this is just paper and acrylic paint. Um, and this is just where I'd like cleaned off my brush, but um, this is going to be the painting. But I'm thinking, I just don't like it blank in the background. So I'd love a comment. What should I do? I was thinking I could paint in the background or I could cut the gnome out and collage it on to some Christmas scrapbook paper or I don't know, I need some more ideas. So if you have any ideas about that, I'd love to know. But this is just acrylic paint. It was really simple um, with some friends on Zoom. All right, that's it, okay? So thank you so much for watching. I'd love uh, if you join my subscribers and give me a like and a comment. Thanks guys, bye.